as Mrs. Pankhurst and her suffragettes pursued a policy of deeds, not words. Protest through militant action. This is Mrs. Pankhurst on the right, photographed during the First World War in a rare piece of film of the suffragette leaders. On the right now is Mrs. Drummond, the general. And on the left is Mrs. Pankhurst's daughter, Christabel. Back in 1908, Christabel had outlined the militant policy. The militant suffragists who formed the women's social and political union are engaged in the attempt to win the parliamentary vote for the women of this country. For 40 years, this reasonable flame has been laid before Parliament. Meetings have been held and petitions signed. That failure has been the result. The reason of this failure is that women have not been able to bring pressure to bear upon the government, and government moves only in response to pressure. We have waited too long for political justice. We refuse to wait any longer. There is no film of suffrage agitation until this constitutional demonstration of 1910. Newsreel cameramen obviously found this more easy to film than secret attacks by militants. Yet militancy had forced the issue into public debate. And in 1910, a bill was introduced to give richer women the parliamentary vote. Mrs. Fawcett's suffragists had been able to organize an impressive amount of male support. In June 1910, constitutionalists and militants marched in triumph, believing the government was at last giving way. In a huge, brilliantly organized parade, over 600 militants dressed in white held arrows proudly aloft as a symbol of their imprisonment for the cause. Many had endured hunger strikes and forced feeding. In the midst of her faithful followers marched Mrs. Pankhurst. The Morning Post observed it was a most striking exhibition of faith and strength, and during its progress probably won for their cause far more supporters than a whole series of disorderly assemblies in Parliament Square. One of the slogans emphasized a point made by Christabel in 1908. The British Constitution provides that taxation and representation shall go together. Therefore, women taxpayers are entitled to vote. But the government disagreed. The bill was shelved. 